In my latest video I showed you how I created the first prototype of my AD Tiny boost converter on a perf board. Since then I've been doing various tests with the circuits and the results turned out better than I expected. That is why I want to design a more professional PCB for the circuits. Usually I would use the program Eagle to do that, just like I did with the PCB I designed for my big 7 segment display. But there also exist other useful programs out there that can do this task, like for example EasyEDA. It is a free online software that allows you to create schematics, PCBs and even simulations for your desired circuits. So in this video I will give the software a try by designing my ATtiny boost converter PCB and finally simulating a couple of circuits. Let's get started. First off I created a free account and afterwards a new project folder for the ADtiny boost converter. Next I needed to recreate my schematic in the software which was pretty easy to do since the easy EDA library offers most of the necessary component symbols on the left side of the screen. Not only is this layout convenient but they also offer the US and EU version of the symbols, which I like because most of the time I'm not a fan of the US symbols. But three components were still missing in the end, the ADtiny85 and two PCB terminals. Now I could create my own schematic symbols for them with the software, but there is an easier way which is my favorite feature of the software. You can actually search for component symbols and packages online and use designs that other users created. This way I found my ADtiny in 5 seconds instead of wasting a minute or two to make my own symbol. And this whole sharing designs and projects concept is rather interesting, because you can have a look at dozens of schematics and PCBs other users created and best of all you can use them as well or modify them for your own projects. But we are getting off topic here. I finished my schematic by using the wiring tool to connect all of the parts together and finally added the input voltage source to complete it. For me it is also important that I can export an image file of the schematic, which the software also supports, but the resolution of the image is a bit too small. Thankfully though you can also export it as an SVG file. This way I can increase its size with Inkscape and then print it out. Next I wanted to convert the schematic into a PCB layout, which is not possible yet because the package aka the actual physical size of the components is not defined yet. For that EasyEDA offers a decently sized library as well in which I found the package for the microcontroller, the diode, the MOSFET and the capacitors. And even though there are package designs for resistors online, I was not capable of importing them when there is a simple design included as well. That was a bit weird. But when there is only a package design available you can easily import that and use it. For the remaining components I used the integrated PCB library designer to create my own package. It can be as simple as measuring the distance between two leads of a component and placing two holes in the software. And when I'm not super lazy I also use the track tool to create an outline for the parts. Again the process was quick and intuitive. And afterwards I was finally capable of creating the PCB without any error messages. I then placed all the components on my board in a logical arrangement and used the track tool to connect them with one another. The given parameters that I can change during this process are not too many and thus not overwhelming, which resulted in a pleasant experience, at least for me. After I increased the width of the main power rails I used the copper area tool to create the ground area. And just like that the PCB is done. Now I could either export the Gerber files of this design or simply use the PCB fabrication service of EasyEDA, which offers reasonable prices. At last let's have a look at the simulation part of the software. Here I built up a simple low pass filter with a voltage source, a resistor and capacitor and attached a voltage probe to the input and output. After selecting the AC analysis and defining the frequency band I got my expected results presented in a graph. 
I also tried another simulation as well with an A-stable multivibrator. And if you're thinking to yourself this all looks similar to the program LT Spice, then you are partly correct. It is based on NG Spice and works very well. The only negative aspect is that the output graph is not that easy to work with, but you can always export the results as a CSV file. And with that being said, let's bring this review to an end. Do I like the program? Yes. It offers everything you need to turn your schematic into a PCB layout without overwhelming you with too many information. They also offer a well-written tutorial about every aspect of the software. So why not have a look for yourself? As always, thanks for watching, stay creative and I will see you next time.